marketing for a market or a business or a farm or a ranch or whatever it is to first really define your values. Um, you have to figure out what's important to you. And you might think, well, obviously I know what my values are, but have you written them out on paper? Have you figured out a way to communicate those in a way that your consumers are really going to connect with? Um, so just bringing that authenticity, sharing what you care about, that's how you're gonna find the folks out there who will connect with your values and end up being hopefully long-term customers. So our farmer's market is only about five years old. And so we have um, really tried to get the message out that we are all locally grown and give the, give the customer photos and videos from not only at the market, but at the farms so that we're transparent and they can see that, yes, you know, Keith and Lisa are growing at their house and it gives them a little bit more credibility as well as our market. And I think that's very important these days because people want products that are locally grown. So our job as partners is to really make sure that we're supporting the values of the organizations that we're with, um, making sure that we're promoting what they want to promote, that we're encouraging them, but also to have a presence there just to be able to support the community, let, it, let everyone know that we're there, but to make sure to, on the social media side and some of the other marketing side, to support when they're, we're there, make sure we encourage community members to come out. Um, we also can add different aspects into um, different connection resources um, if it's something that we need to work on to have a taste testing um, to be able to work with our producers. So people that are coming, we also can work with different activities um, for people who do bring their young kids. But our main goal as a partner is to support the values of the farmers markets, the producers and the growers. What are, what are some pitfalls to avoid? Um, maybe if our values don't match those of a partner or of a consumer, um, have you ever run into that? Well, yeah, and you just have to handle that very de delicately. Um, you don't want to offend the other vendors and the other and the consumers that are there as well. So sometimes you have to ask a vendor to go on and to find someplace else that's a better match for them because not always is it a good match to be at your market. I'll add from a sort of producer perspective. Um, we also have some slides. I wasn't assigned to manage the slides, but I'll just show you. This is um, sort of a glimpse of our Instagram account, um, re.farm. And we've got you know really awesome photos, but sort of the way that I run our Instagram is I write very long form posts, which this is, I think, a good tidbit for all of you. There is no one size fits all when it comes to telling your story. You have to figure out what works for you. For us, we sort of treat our Instagram and our newsletter more like a blog. So we have very long form posts where I write about things that we're learning about on the farm or what makes us different or what our values are or you know the science behind how we're regenerating the soil. Um, and I will say that when it comes to pitfalls, we've had to learn that we're not gonna be everyone's cup of tea and that's okay. Um, I think it can be tempting to cast a very wide net and try to reel in as many people as possible, but that shouldn't be the goal. You want to find the people that you really connect with on a deep and personal level. Um, and so for us, again, we, because we do regenerative ranching, our practices look a little bit different than the other livestock farmers in our area. And again, that's okay. Um, we're just communicating things from a different angle. And so I think don't be afraid to share what's important to you, even at the expense of maybe offending someone else, but also you obviously want to communicate with care and caution. And so something that, 
you know, we prioritize at our farm is we're not only producing healthy food, we're also producing hopefully healthy conversation. So the beautiful thing about food is that it invites everyone around a table. And you know, now we live in a time where it's, it's almost easier to find things you disagree with someone about over things that you agree about. But when you're discussing those things around a table, you're not gonna get mad at each other because you're there, you're having that real-time face-to-face contact. And obviously that's not always the case on social media, but we treat our social media, Instagram, Facebook, website, newsletter, as if it were a table. We wanna invite people in to have healthy dialogue and healthy conversations with us. Can you elaborate on cultivating those connections with people? Yeah, Um, you know, people say a product should sell itself. But again, going back to what I said earlier, everyone's trying to sell something now, you have to have genuine connection with people. And the internet, although it has its many downsides, it is a really good tool in order to form authentic connections with people. And so the more transparent you can be, the more authentic you can be in telling your story, the more you're inviting people in, the more they're going to feel connected to you, your brand, your product, your market, whatever it may be. Um, And so really, I just always encourage people, don't focus so much on your product. Yeah, your product is like a really good way to meet with customers, but focus on telling your story. I, I feel like regardless of whatever you do here in this room, whether you're a producer or a market manager or however you are connected to our food system, I guarantee you, you have a compelling story behind what brought you there. And people want to know that. They want to know what invited you into this space. And when you build those connections with people, that's what's going to translate to more customers, to more foot traffic, to whatever else it may be. So try to think of the connection first, your values first, customers and sales come second. Thank you. Um, So what impact have you all seen from storytelling and sharing your values? Well, at our market, all I will have to say all of our vendors are very good to communicate with their customers, to build a bond and a real relationship with them. Um, It's almost, we had a farmer last year that had a real tragic accident and the whole, Farmers market consumers were all there for them, to help them, to encourage them. And that was one of the things at the end of the at the end of the season that they came back and said, you know, I really don't know what we would have done without our farmers market family. And it wasn't just the other vendors, it was the customers as well. And so all of ours are real good to make relationships and that has been real important to our market. Um, You'll have to forgive me. I'm really bad (laughs) about listening and not paying attention to what I'm supposed to respond to. Um, But with the partnership side of things, um, with outside partners, not necessarily vendors or producers, um, you do want to make sure that you find those that are going to support and complement. Um, if you have asked an outside organization that is not a producer or a vendor to come be bre- present at your market at your farm, and they don't have any value to add to your farm, or they get there and they're just like, yeah, I'm here. You know, you want to find those organizations that want to be involved, that want to be a participate, that want to help you get your information, your pro- your product, um, and your community to be a stronger, healthier place. So TSET has been an excellent <laughs> partner across the state of Oklahoma. Um, can you kind of tell us what you're looking for in a partner or what kind of um, partners you support? So we really look at supporting kind of any and all partners that kind of want to work with us and partner with us. Um, And it is going to be different in every county, just because each of our counties, we have different outcomes and objectives that we're working on. But our three, you know, we have three main goals with the 
pro or with our program with one of them being nutrition um, and making sure we're helping to increase access to healthier foods across our county. Um, and so we do that by a variety of ways. Um, oh, there you go. Um, we have, we switched the next slide real quick too. So we, come, we can come out to any farm event, to any um, farmer's market, to whatever is out and about in the community. We set up information and it just varies on what we bring to the table um, on what the target audience is. So we will sometimes bring stuff like this. Um, we'll bring information um, to help provide, like we have resources that have information on fruits and vegetables, how to store, how to cut, age appropriate stuff. Um, we also don't reinvent the wheel and we utilize a lot of our resources that we have access to. Um, and so we utilize a lot of OSU extension um, resources and information. We rely heavily on them um, for the education piece that we can't do. Um, so we really just want to, so again, we wanna support our farmer's market. Um, and Cindy might be able to give a little bit more on like how the TSET program benefits with the farmer's markets, but we do really want to be out there. We want to be a part of the community. We like seeing everybody. And that's when you're looking for outside organizations that are not producers or growers, that's what you want. You want somebody that is going to add that value to your market, to your business, um, and just generally want to be there and want to be your partner. So we have a lot of children that come with their parents to the market. And that's one thing with TSET. They always have games and things that the kids can interact with. And we have found that if you can get the kids there, you're going to get mom and dad there. And they're going to do more shopping and ask questions because the kids are as eager to learn as the adults or more so. Thank you. Um, what are your favorite tools, uh, social media, newsletter, photos, et cetera, for communicating your values and your telling your story? I think for us, we've found that Instagram and Facebook are sort of the best ways to connect with people for better or for worse. Newsletters are great. I would not overuse them. People don't like their inboxes being cluttered. Um, so maybe once a month max other people might have success with more or less than that um but instagram how well how many of you are producers in here a lot of you awesome okay you know the the hard thing now is that if you are a producer it used to be that that was your job you were a producer but if you're deciding or have decided or do sell direct to consumer you now have to wear 20 other hats one of which is marketing and so most producers probably don't have a lot of marketing experience. And it's, it's a shame that so much responsibility is now falling on producers to market their product direct to consumer. But if you are not on Instagram or Facebook, I just highly encourage you to get on, to start experimenting, start sharing, just share little snippets. It doesn't have to be super strategic, just learn what are folks connecting with? What are folks seeing? Um, but I think it's a really, it's a pretty easy place to just jump on board and learn as you go. And I also want to just say that I'm happy to be a resource for any producers here who have marketing questions. Um, just come talk to me after this. Um, but definitely social media, you just, these days you kind of have to do it. I would definitely say for us, it is social media as well. We don't even bother doing a newsletter. Um, one thing I do encourage my producers to do is on Wednesday, I like for them to send me pictures and tell me what they're going to have available for the market on Saturday. Um, they, and I encourage them to put it on their farm page as well, but it, it gives the community a chance to see what's gonna be there. They plan ahead and it, it helps both the market and them as well. Um, we do do videos. We usually go live um, from the market on Saturday mornings just to let people see, yes, we're open, who all's there, what they've got. It gives them a 
you know, a fresh look on what's available for the day. Um, if we're having an activity or an event that day, it brings that to their attention as well. Um, people are visual, they wanna see it. So you can also ask any of your partners and organizations, like when it's posted on like day before, well, who's gonna be there um, or what food they're gonna be able to provide. Um, the Creek County TSET Healthy Living Program and quite a few of the other TSET Pro Healthy Living Programs do a good job of following as many partners as we can on social media and making sure that we're also sharing them. Um, and I know um, Lisa, who is supposed to be here and her staff, they have gone live a couple times with what they've done. They make sure to post and share and tag people um, that are in there that they know um, at the market. And it's just making sure you do, you do share that and you get the word out, um, but you also have partners who are willing to invest that time in you and in your market as well to be able to reshare because the more shares you guys and more likes that is, are getting that you're getting, um, the more it comes across to other people's feeds. Have you seen um, or do you have any examples of specific types of posts that seem to uh, get more attention than others? Videos. People like to see it live or, you know, some, if it's at a farm and the farmer or you are doing a farm visit and it's a video, it catches more attention. Yeah, really cute farm animals have tended to work in our favor. <laughs> um, and I, well, that doesn't show it here, but quality photos and videos are key. Um, if you don't have a phone or a camera that takes high quality photos and videos, I highly encourage you to invest in one because it's really going to pay off in the long run. For us, our best posts are ones where we are educating folks. So I would say that's one of our core values is education. So you can't see our post here, but this egg photo that I have up there, I did a really long post about what you want to look for when you're purchasing eggs at the store, do's and don'ts. And so many folks engaged with that. It's just information that people are craving right now. Obviously, people want local food, but they want knowledge. They want to feel empowered to make good, healthy decisions for themselves and their family. So share these tips, because what's common knowledge to you all as producers, customers more than likely don't know, and they're just waiting for you to teach them. I'm probably not the best person to ask. Um, there, there's a max character limit. I think it's 280 characters and I get real close to that every time. I'm normally chopping words off and that does not work for everyone. I mean, conciseness is key, which is sort of a social media general rule of thumb. If you can say it in less words, do it. Um, but again, we really do some elaborate storytelling on ours and we've just discovered that that works for us. So you kind of just have to work with it and see what your customers are engaging with. I think having kids around, making sure that you have kiddos, if you can, and you're allowed to have kiddos in the pictures, as well as the fuzzy animals. Um, and I also think um, smiling, happy people. So if it is a market day and you have somebody at your booth that is just asking tons of questions, is so happy to be there, ask them for a picture and say, hey, can I take a picture buying our produce and share it? Um, and I think that's, you know, people are going to see that as instead of like, oh, it's just a boring farmer's market. I'm going to want to get produce. Um, but it's alive. The farmer's markets are alive. They should be seen as alive um, and making sure that your posts reflect that. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so most of us have multiple values when it comes to this type of work. Um, maybe it's healthy food access, humane animal treatment, land stewardship, quality food. Um, should you worry about which ideas connect with consumers the most? I wouldn't say worry, but you definitely want to be aware. Um, I'm going to go back here. You can see our bio. We tried to fit as many of our core values into this short little bio as possible. Um, and we have so many core values. 
whether it be health of individuals and family, environmental and soil health, advocating for local food and humane treatment of animals. We embody all of those things, and I'm sure you all embody a variety of values. You can't fit them all into every single post all the time, but I think it's important to sort of share them in seasons and in different times, and what we've really learned helps us kind of gauge what do we need to be sharing right now is the few minutes we have with, with each customer at the farmer's market, where we just have a few minutes to really hone in, hone in on what does this person care about? Because the reality is they're probably going to align with at least one of our core values, probably not all of them, but at least one. And so we're kind of asking rapid fire questions to gauge what do you care about? Because I will show you that we're here to meet that need and meet that core value that, we, that you have because we have it too. Um, so listen to your customers on sort of the producer side of things, because they're going to be informing you through the conversations that you're having, um, what they want to hear more about. So I look at it from a different lens than some people. Um, and I look at the connectivity and the access side, you know, can people get to your market if they do not have a vehicle? Is there safe sidewalks? Can they walk there? Can they skateboard, ride a bike there safely? Um, so that's something that is very valuable to me that I really try to look at. Um, and when talking to people it, it, and with different farmers markets and different community members, there's usually sometimes that one side of your community, that one side of town that they don't have access to fresh fruit or veggies or healthier food options you know, but can they get to where it's offered? Um, and that's one of, that's, again, I look at it from a different lens when it comes to that, but that is something that is so very, very powerful to me. Um, I cannot ride my bike safely to my local farmer's market. My kids cannot come with me. You have to drive. Um, and that is, that's one of those things that's very difficult. And it's also very difficult to express and make changes on because established farmers markets already is that just that you're established and it's hard to see like why would we move why would we change why would we look at doing something different when we're good here we're established here and it's working but sometimes taking that outside look to go okay maybe maybe on Tuesdays we go to this location where people can walk to us or we have a higher senior population that are not even driving anymore. Um, so that's one of those value, values to me that I really try to work on and help with our farmers markets. Um, so what impact have you seen from communicating your values? I feel like that's a, a good follow-up question there. Have you seen change uh, when you communicate that value of food access? It depends on who you're talking to. Um, so some of our some of our producers and our market managers, some of them are very like, yeah, we might be able to make this happen. Let's have, let's see what this looks like. Let's see how we can move it down here. Um, but then sometimes you have producers that aren't able to add a different day because they're at another location. So it's really just trying to find that balance. You also sometimes have the difficulties of local municipalities and governments who it's trying, trying to get them to understand why this vacant lot over here would be a great way, great opportunity to be able to host pop-up markets when people are available and ready to do it. There is sometimes hesitancy with so many different things. So, but it's just kind of working and finding those few people that are like, yes, we see this need. We know this needs to be here. Um, and I think sometimes the, the hardest hesitancy comes from the thought of, we have always done it this way. This is working. Why would we try anything else? Um, and I think once we can get enough people on on board to support, to be able to say, yes, but if we did it this way, this is what we could do. This could be additional revenue. You know, during this time at this farmer's market on this side, we're gonna accept SNAP, but on this day, we're not going to. Um, and trying to find that balance. And it really is that, that the people, finding the people that are gonna support you in that, um, in making those changes. There is resistance. 
There's resistance in everything that we do, but um, that's also sometimes where your partners to come, can come in, your community partners can come in to have your back and to help get you that information um, and be your advocate for you. From a farmer's market manager or a producer standpoint, what impact have you seen from communicating your values? Have, like increased consumers or? Well, here again, social media has played a huge part in our market. It seems like the weeks that maybe we don't get the word out as much as we would like to or about different events and things that's going on at the market, we may not have the attendance um, that we should or that we would like. And so I think that being said that, you know, we have always got to be communicating with the public on what we're doing, what's going on, who's going to be there. And um, again, you know, you were talking about location. Um, we are a half a block from one senior uh, apartment building and a block and a half from another. I strategically placed it there because of that. Um, I want our seniors to be able to walk to the market. We are right on Route 66. We're right on the highway. We're right in the middle of downtown. People can see us. We've got the traffic. It's easy to get to. We do have um, local transportation that can bring people to the market. So it's easy access for anybody to get in and out. But if we don't keep communicating our message out there all the time, we hurt ourselves. Yeah, I'm just gonna reiterate what I said earlier, which is the more you're communicating your values, the more people you're going to connect with, the more sales, the more your sales are going to increase. I mean, it's just, it is a linear train. So the more time you invest in knowing your values and learning how to communicate them really well, it is gonna pay off in the long run. Um, I think for us too, we have found that, you know, through our communication, we don't really just talk about our farm. We're often talking about a movement, um, a movement toward eating local, supporting local farmers, knowing your local farmers. Um, and because of that, our audience has really branched out. We've got followers, people who engage with us from all over the US and sometimes all over the world. And we have people reaching out to us now for consulting. Like, how do I, how do I transition some of my farm to more regenerative practices, for example? Or how do you connect with folks at farmer's markets? Um, so just being a resource for welcoming in people's questions. Um, because like it was mentioned this morning in the introductory talk, there is sort of this movement back to the land. Um, and what a privilege for us to be able to be alive and participating in it um, in this cultural moment. And so just really live into that space, live into communicating what you're doing because your work is so important. And the more you can do that, the more it's gonna pay off. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about partnerships for just a minute. Um, we've seen a lot of power in partnerships uh, through TSET, ONI, the Department of Ag. Um, as a grower or a farmer's market, how do you maintain your values when seeking out partners outside of your organization? We have not only do we have TSET and ONI and all those. We also uh, partner with a local organization that's a nonprofit that's called Caring Community Friends. And uh, they help provide families with food as well. They have a community garden. And they also recently have built with other partnerships a bookmobile. And so we try to have them with the bookmobile at least once a month at our market. Um, a lot of our producers have gone out and helped with their community garden, helped them in that whole process of getting that uh, going and volunteer for the days that they're handing out free food. Um, 
we have some of our producers that may have some product left at the end of the day um, will donate to the commun Caring Community Friends. And so we have found that to be a really good partnership um, because we help them. The community sees that we are doing that work as well. And it is made for a really great partnership. That is excellent. I'll just add on the flip side of that. For us as producers, um, we are now at Scissor Tail Market in Oklahoma City. And the only reason we got in there is because Mary Bixler, the market manager, found us on Instagram, started to hear about the things and values we, we were communicating, and reached out and invited us in. And that's just opened up a world of opportunities for us. Um, so it, it works in the flip side too. Those partnerships will come out of your communication strategy. The only thing I have to say more about partnerships is <laughs> just if people make sure that the, whoever's wanting to partner with you, if they're coming to you, make sure you know why, why now, why is this important to you now? to make sure that you're, again, you're communicating your values because if their values aren't there and they're gonna be there for complete selfish reasons, um, whether it's promoting their own self, their own business, their own organization, um, just, just, I don't wanna say be cautious, but be, be very, ask questions, ask questions, especially if you've been a producer or a farmer's market that's been established for a while and they're just now doing this, try to figure out why and don't hesitate to ask why and don't hesitate to say, yes, I think you're gonna be a great partner. Um, and really don't hesitate to say, you know what? I wanna thank you for reaching out to me. Now I don't think is a right time for your organization to be partnered with us, but we still would love your support in however way you can. Don't, don't hesitate to say yes um, and don't hesitate to say no either. Thank you. Um, let me check our time. Uh, do you have any examples of successful events um, where you identified shared values and used those to develop something great? So I'm kind of on a mission to develop young farmers. So I have partnered up with uh, one of our local FFA. And uh, we have done Kids Fest and they have came out and helped us with that where um, we have had um, games and they played the games with the kids. We've had uh, produce scavenger hunts um, that Oni had helped us make up and they have helped the kids go around and do the scavenger hunts. Um, trying to get the kids out always gets mom and dad out or grandma and grandpa. And so um, I like to have the FFA kids there because they get then to know the producers they develop a relationship with them and hopefully we can get more younger farmers coming and the kids look up to the older kids and they're watching, you know, what they're doing and, and talking to the farmers and stuff and well. So that's, that event has been really good for us and uh, hopefully this year we can bring it back. So Cindy's being um, a little bit not um, forthcoming about a few of the partnerships um, that they have created. So the Sepulpa Farmer's Market and what Cindy, Cindy is with Main Street. So the Sepulpa's Farmer's Market and TSET, Carry Commuting Friends, um, the local coalition that they have there, which is CP3, C3, something like that. Um, so not only have they grown the farmer's market, they have made those partnerships with caring community friends. Um, and then the bookmobile that Cindy talked about, that was something that came out of this partnership that's been two years now, um, that is not only just providing books, 
they are also providing snacks and food to school aged kids. They are a certified um, school summer lunch program. Yeah. There we go. Um, they're a summer certified summer lunch program that's come with this. So not only are they out doing this and being part of that and showing up at the farmer's market, um, and it, it was one of those things that the dominoes just happened to fall where they fell. Somebody had an idea and all the partners did come together to get this done. Um, so, so it can, those partnerships can really come together in a way that is so beneficial for the community, for the kids of the community, um, that really, really make those partnerships, those long hours, those times, um, of where not everyone's going to get along, not everyone's going to agree, um, but they're at the table. And that's how you do get things done. And especially with communicating shared values and working together. If those organizations did not have that shared value and were able to communicate and were able to get together, none of that would have happened. Thank you. Um, how can a producer seek out partnerships that are beneficial for them? I think the first step is connecting with other producers. Um, one of the downsides of being a food producer is that it's a pretty siloed industry. Um, I think farmers have one of the highest suicide rates in the nation. Um, it's very isolating at times and it's very hard work where oftentimes it feels like you're struggling, you're in over your head more times than you're thriving. And I think part of the key is producers forming relationships with each other because there's so much camaraderie in sharing your experiences, especially the hard experiences that we're all going through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and so the more you can connect with producers, get to know their story, you learn where they're plugged in, um, vice versa. So your networks continue to build and expand upon each other. Uh, but I, I think that's really a key missing piece here is producer connectivity. And thankfully, something like farmer's markets really help combat that. But if you are participating at a farmer's market, get to know the other producers there. Um, well, this question is also for producers. Um, is there, you guys are so busy, you know, doing work. Um, how do you find time to do social media? Is there a way to streamline, streamline that or make it easier? Yeah, this is what works for me. Again, if you talk to a social media expert, they would probably say no to everything that I'm about to say, but we don't follow any sort of regimen. People will say, you need to post two times per week. You need to do this, 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 and this. And that checklist just does not work for us. And it takes all of the joy out of sharing what we're doing with people. The reality is sometimes we don't share things for a month. I don't recommend that, but we're just so busy. We don't have time for it. And it's not like any of us can afford to go hire a social media manager. Um, so what I tend to do is I will always have my phone with me when I'm out doing farm chores and I'm taking pictures all the time. Nine out of 10 of them are terrible and I'm not gonna use them, but the one out of 10 is great. So when I'm in bed at night, winding down, I'm going through those photos, deleting the bad ones. I save the good ones into an album on my phone. I don't need to post it immediately, but at least they're there. And then, then in terms of content, it's kind of the same thing. I've got a notes app in my phone and as I think of things that are based on something that I'm learning or something that Zach and I have been discussing or something a customer has asked a question about, I'm gonna jot that into my phone, just a few words. And so then whenever I have time and I'm feeling inspired, you wanna feel inspired when you're going to share something on social media, because if it feels like work to you, that's gonna translate over to whoever's reading it. They're gonna feel that, that energy. And we don't, we don't want that. We want good content that feels like you've invested your time and inspiration into it. So I've got those two things, the album and the notes. And whenever I'm feeling inspired, I'm gonna go piece those things together. I'm gonna turn it into a caption, put it with a photo. And again, those things could be sitting in my phone for weeks, even months at a time, but that's okay. You know, social media isn't my full-time job, but that, that's what works for us. And hopefully some of you guys can adopt that strategy. It may not be best practices, but it's what's more realistic for all of us as producers. For those of you who don't make notes on a regular basis, 
um, who um, may be more like my dad, who just struggles with the phones in general. Um, voice memos. You can make voice memos really easy to do, um, and then you can still come back to it. Um, I, I recently had to walk my stepdad how to make voice memos and voice text because he did not care to type. Sometimes going to know the people means that they may not be that connected. And this goes into a lot of other things. Uh, I didn't even write this. So I had to do something else too. I had to do something else too. I had to do something else too. Yeah. Now my bail, my other 15 year old niece that works at the That's fair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's a good example of sharing sharing your story, the impact of sharing your story. That's great. Mm -hmm. And people love people. They love seeing people in your posts. So it's tempting to make it just about your vegetables or your animals or your protein or whatever it may be. But the more you can get, get the farmer in there, get your family in there, get visitors in there. We love the human aspect of that. That's a really good point. And for the online folks here too, they were sharing about how they sort of tap into other people in their network or family who might be more familiar with social media. Um, that's a really key missing piece of this too, is that I guarantee you there are people, whether they're in your family or a customer at the farmer's market who want to help you out, who would love the opportunity to provide you with some value. And social media is a really easy way to invite people in. Most people will probably do it for free. My only caveat to that is you want to make sure those folks are really tapped into what you're doing, tapped into your story and your values. And again, not just posting for the sake of sharing something, but posting because they're also invested in the work that you're doing. Just a random thought that I had um, with that. And again, probably any social media person would tell you don't do this. Um, show the bad too, especially for you guys as producers. You guys work hard. You work hard hours and crap breaks. Post it. Post a picture of you guys fixing it. Posting a picture of 
for whoever grows pumpkin, the deer took three bites out of a beautiful pumpkin and completely ruined it. Um, you know, just be like this, you know, just post some of those bad things, the fun things and the good things with it, because it will, for those of us who don't produce, who don't grow anything, um, but also there are some that don't have family, don't know how truly hard that our producers and our growers work. Um, so don't be afraid to share that side of it too. Thank you. Um, for those of us who are not used to using social media, how do we, how do we ask for help? How do we seek out someone to help us? Do you have any tips on that? If you have a partner that you know that has an organization that does have social media, don't hesitate to ask them to say, hey, can you help me? Can you, can you help me do this? Can you show me maybe how to post this? Um, how do we, how do we share this? You know, how do I get started? Um, so do not hesitate to ask those partnered organizations. Also, I'm pretty sure OSU Extension is able to help with some of those technological needs as well too in your local county. If they say I was wrong. Oh yeah, there is gonna be a social media um, uh, breakout session. Um, it's gonna be right after lunch. So if that is another way you're interested, something you're interested in, go to that too. <laughs> Do you have a question? That is excellent. Reach out to them, ask them, and it's fun to try to pair your customer, but if it's initially more engaged, then you get more attention from the media person. They understand what you're doing, they know you, they know your product, they're going to be more engaged and very helpful. I'm going to repeat the question How do you inspire your customers to promote your products on their social media? Yeah. We are out there giving them free items every once in a while. I like that idea. Discounts because you get addicted to discounts. <laughs> but a free item here and there means the world. They come up to your farmer's market and say, hey, thanks for all that you've done for the farm industry. Hop up in the trailer and check out what's going on up here. And that's like the biggest deal in the world to people that make coffee for $6. But it's the biggest deal in the world to the customer base. And we've got loads of people. That is great. Do you have a question? No, actually, also see something that helps. And I'm a producer, but I also produce lots of uh, lots of thoughts, lots of food for the dog realm. But I've noticed that on almost that's how I've got almost all of my customers was from one guy who posted about my hot sauce how it was so hot that you couldn't like communicate with them for a week. And then it started, yeah, they started coming. And then after after one of the marketing tried another man tried it and he was like he kind of fell down and that was they got it and they posted that on facebook for me i didn't have to do it okay it. what is your hot sauce i'm curious it's called reaper flower farms but i do a ghost pepper a carolina reaper i do all of the stuff that you've got there so that's my hot sauce so, so that's your customers are coming back <laughs> they're fainting <laughs> 
We have just a few minutes left. Does anyone have any questions? Any other comments? Oh, question. Who are you asking? <laughs> you would think that would be an easy question for me to answer with what I'm doing. Um, you know, we get that question asked a lot. Um, and everybody's perception of what is healthy food is different. Um, you know, we, we look at the fresh produce, um, local meats, you know, anything like that. Um, but, you know, we also don't discourage about like canned food and can with, and frozen fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm working on, um, in K County is trying to make sure people know how to properly store food, how to properly, um, can it and or freeze it. So it can last them longer. Um, but I, I really do think that it just, it just varies. Everybody has a different opinion on what healthy food is. I am. Um, so my, my opinion of healthy food is going to be food that um, makes you feel good. It is good for your body. It is good for your brain. It is good for your soul. Um, and yes, that does sometimes include fried chicken because fried chicken can be good for the soul on rare occasion, not every night. Um, but like, I, I am a big believer with my kiddos that eat, um, healthy foods. My little boy got made fun of at lunch at school at lunch the other day because he loves sweet peppers and then somebody made fun of him for it. Um, so I just think it's, for me, it's just going to be you know, what you like. And also if you're not, if you don't like eggplant and don't buy eggplant, don't force yourself to eat something that you don't like just because you think it's healthy. Um, but just, you know, I also really like looking local. I like trying to find those local things that I know that not only am I like looking at healthier foods in that way, but I'm also supporting our producers. I'm supporting our growers. Um, and usually local food's going to be a little bit fresher and have a different taste than some of our fruit food that we buy at the grocery store. Um, I, my favorite is tomatoes. I will buy, I will buy tomatoes all summer long. Um, and I just love being able to bite into one like an apple and it tastes like the sun. That is what I want out of a tomato. I'll just add quickly, I think culturally we've become very disembodied from the food that we eat. That doesn't apply probably to most of us in this room, but really I think the key to healthy eating is looking at food holistically. It's not something that's necessarily totally separate from us. Obviously the food we eat becomes who we are. Um, and so when you're talking about local foods and local food systems, you wanna connect your consumer and invite them in to ask hard questions. Consumers should know how you produce your food. What practices are you using? Um, are you, do you have to use pesticides? Are your animals on pasture? Whatever it may be, um, these are just important conversations to have. I don't think it's necessarily about having this checklist of rules. It's about holistically approaching food and just sort of rebuilding the way that we think about healthy eating. Um, because obviously diet culture hasn't helped us much, um, at least in the way that we approach it here in the States. Uh, we've got about three minutes left. I want to um, maybe take one more question, but before I do that, I want to remind you all to fill out the survey. Um, if you can get on your Whova app and fill that out, that would be great. If you don't have the app, um, I've got a few paper surveys here. Does anyone have any more questions? I have a question for the gentleman in the back. So are your buffalo going to be present at the wedding venue? So they're going to be in like the background. Actually, we just set a contest. I'm not going to the wedding. <laughs> That's awesome. That's fun. 
Okay, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you to our panel for being here. I felt like this was a really great discussion. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference and don't forget to fill out our survey.